good evening, brothers. My name is Alf uh, or Ali Matsimbi. Um, many of you know me as Ali. Um, I've got two names. The name uh, that I use at work, they call me Alfred. And I'm well known. I grew up known as Ali. Um, allow me to say, um, or oh, first and foremost, let me thank the leadership of the church for allowing me to share um, credit wellness and financial management issues. I am an employee of the National Credit Regulator. And then I do consumer education. And after being approached by quite a number of, uh, after being approached by quite a number of brothers and sisters um, encountering challenges, I then made a request to the leadership of the church that I should be given a chance to share um, what I'm doing all over the country. I visit churches, I visit departments, and I'm sharing um, a very important message on credit wellness and financial management. So I'm not alone tonight. I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Jimmy Golele, who is actually my boss, uh, he's joining today and he will be assisting if there is time to respond to questions. Um, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, um, credit and finances play a very, very significant role, not only in our economy, but also it affects our wellness. Through credit, we can service our wants and needs and even acquire assets as well as liabilities. Many of us, we know each other. I know the clothes, the labels that we wear. We use credit for that. The beautiful vehicles that we often see at church, they were purchased on credit. Beautiful houses that you live in. Many of you, I know you from the townships and the rural areas. Today, you are living a suburban life. You are living in the suburbs. You bought beautiful houses. You used credit. Mortgage bond is called. There are those who are wise, and they start small to medium-sized businesses using credit. And in this case, credit is working for you. There are those who have personal loans, and they are drowning in debt. And that type of credit is called unsecured credit. As I indicated, there is secured credit, which stands for purchases such as vehicles. So unsecured credit, uh, you have personal loans. Unfortunately, many of us end up being addicted to debt. So debt addiction leads to over-indebtedness. And over-indebtedness can negatively impact your health will remember very well in the previous uh, parliament um, administration, I mean, when the parliamentarians came together, there was this question, when are you paying back the money? And the, the, the parliament had to dismiss because chaos broke loose immediately. Now, some of us find ourselves in such situations where you are receiving countless number of phone calls, and the question that they are asking you is, when are you paying back the money? Once you fail to pay your money, the, the, the installments that you have signed for, you find yourself that your health gets affected by this because repeatedly your blood pressure will rocket sky high and so on and so forth. Your sugar levels start to misbehave in your body. And that's a serious problem. It affects even your relationship with your God. Now, allow me to quickly quote a scripture for you. I'm reading two scriptures in line with that. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. The rich rule over the poor, the borrower is a slave to the lender. So you can clearly see that from this scripture, it's clear that being in debt, you become a slave. 
debts enslave us. The second scripture that I quickly want to read before I dwell in detail on my presentation, it's Psalms 37, verse 21. Psalms 37, verse 21 says, The wicked borrows and do not repay, but the righteous is generous and gives. You know, you can see it clearly that the Bible is clear that when we are in debt, when we keep on borrowing, we find ourselves deep in debt. So as followers of Christ, you are expected to save your debt. Now, the work that I do, we do consumer education. Among other things is to say to us, we have to avoid over indebtedness. Because as the Bible even teaches, over indebtedness leads to slavery. When you are compelled by circumstances to make use of credit, you have to always use registered credit providers or registered service providers. Our country, South Africa, has got pieces of legislation which protects the rights of consumers. And what is a consumer? A consumer is the end user. You are protected. When you make use of credit, you are protected under the National Credit Act number 34 of 2005. But we are encouraging you to know your rights. And as you know your rights, know and understand that rights are forever paired with responsibilities. Now, the National Credit Act was introduced to protect your rights as a credit consumer. This piece of legislation promotes economic and social welfare. It ensures that there is fairness within the credit industry. It ensures that your rights as a credit consumer are protected. But it also leveled the playing fields between credit providers and also standardized the way in which credit is granted. So we fully urge consumers to know their rights and to know their responsibilities. Let me quickly tell you the role of the National Credit Regulator. The NCR is the a custodian of the National Credit Act number 34, 2005. The role of the NCR is to register the industry participants. We're talking about pay, 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 payment distribution agents, credit providers, credit bureaus, debt counselors, and ADRs, alternative dispute resolution companies. The department that I belong to is responsible to educate and create awareness of the protection offered by the NCA. The other role that we conduct, we do in at the NCR is to conduct research within the credit industry. Then we advise the government on policy and legislation. What is critically important is that if you are unfairly treated within the credit industry, remember that you have a right to lodge a complaint with the NCR. The NCR will receive your complaint and conduct investigations. We'll ensure that your rights are protected. How? We enforce the National Credit Act. We take action against the contravention of the act. Now let's quickly talk about our, the rights that we have as consumers. Unfortunately, the circumstances and the situation that we find ourselves force us to consume credit. And when we consume credit, many of us don't know that there are rights that are paired with responsibilities. So let me indicate that you have a right to apply for credit free from direct or indirect discrimination. Should you sense that you are unfairly treated within the credit industry, do not hesitate to lodge a complaint with the NCR. You have a right to disclosure of information. People who are selling things to us, whether vehicles, cars, houses, any type of credit must disclose. They must give you a full disclosure of information about what you are buying. When are you going to start paying? How much are they going to charge you? The other important thing is that 
Many people sign credit agreements out of excitement and they do not even make time to read what is written on the credit agreement. It's your responsibility as a consumer to read with understanding before you can sign. In doing Funugu Isho, Uti, Tata let document the Babu Payon, Uhambe, Uye Ekaya, Uyo Ifunda, and a sweet love Lom Kurwa before you can sign the credit agreement. You have a right to information in an official language. The language has to be simple, plain, and understandable. So don't sign any credit agreement that you do not understand because many, many of our brothers and sisters are finding themselves in trouble because they have just signed. Some of us, we sign credit agreements even over the phone with less understanding. So we also have a right to access and to challenge credit records and information held by the credit bureau. It is your right. It's also your right to be given a pre-agreement statement and a quotation. That is why I'm emphasizing that before you can sign any credit agreement, the credit provider must give you a pre-agreement statement and a quotation. Go through it, even make time, negotiate for a lower interest rate. On the 23rd, on the 22nd of, of, of September, the the Reserve Bank met, the Monetary Policy Committee met, MPC, they met and then they hiked interest rate by 75 basis points. So it's your responsibility as a consumer before you sign any credit agreement to check the interest rates that they are charging you and take that up, uh, adv advantage of a week to negotiate for a lower interest rate. Don't just take what they are giving you because that will help you a lot if you can negotiate for a lower interest rate, even if they can just give you half a percentage. Remember, credit providers need you more than you need them. And it's your responsibility to negotiate. Whether you are buying a car, you are buying a house, don't just accept that they said they have approved. Sit with them, let them give you a pre-agreement statement, and then go through it try and negotiate for a lower interest rate, even if they just give you a half a percentage. You have a right to confidential treatment. The information that we share with credit providers and service providers have to be used strictly for that purpose. You share your ID, you share your bank statements, you share your salary advice. Those documents must be used strictly for that purpose and not for any other thing. Now, many of us accept even to, to, to be contacted by credit providers by ticking at the bottom there, can we contact you? You just tick yes. Out of desperation for your loan, you choose that they can contact you. And tomorrow you are wondering, why am I receiving so many phone calls where people are advertising? Fortunately, we have another new credit regulator, another regulator, it's known as information regulator. It's a new creed in the block. The information regulator is there to protect your rights as far as personal information is concerned. Remember, not long ago, I think um, uh, last year, we did attend a workshop where uh, as, uh, the, the lady was explaining POPIA, protection of personal information. So if credit providers or service providers are using your information for wrong reasons, they are distributing it without your permission. You have a right to log a complaint with the information regulator. So that is why I want to emphasize that when you share your documents with credit providers and service providers, they must use these documents specifically for that purpose only. You also have a right to confidential treatment. You have a right to reasons for credit being declined. You approach your bank, you are applying for credit or you approach, you approach a service provider, you want a contract phone or any other as a service, they decline your application. Legally, it is your right to be informed as to what are the reasons as to why your application for credit is declined. Among other reasons why they decline, it may be because you are already over 
committed or you are adversely listed. Many of us call it blacklisted, but the correct term is adverse listing or negative listed. The credit bureau has got, um, uh, uh, every time you contact the service provider, the credit bureau is informed. When you apply for a loan or you take any form of service from the service provider, they, they are informed. When you pay, they are also informed that you are paying your account on time. When you miss your installments, they are informed that this person took a loan or bought a car, he is missing um, um, uh, payments. They may classify you as a delinquent because you are not keeping to the contract. Should you be over indebted, you have a right to assistance. And this assistance come in the form of debt review, voluntary surrender of goods, or credit life insurance. Those are known as debt relief measures. I'm gonna talk about debt counseling or debt review if time allows me. You also have a right to automatic removal of adverse information kept by the credit bureau. You were, you had an account, you failed to pay on time, they decided to adversely list your name at the credit bureau. Tomorrow you wake up, you settle your account. The National Credit Amendment Act state that within seven business days, they must clear your name from negative listing. As long as you are negatively listed, you will no longer receive any form of savings or any form of credit until your name is clear from negative listing. So many of us are not aware or we are forgetting that cash is king. Cash is king because if you buy even just a TV set, if it says 6,000 or a monitor, 6,000 rand, you also have stand a chance of negotiating for a lower uh, interest. I mean, for a low, you can negotiate that they, they reduce the amount. They can give you a discount. But if you sign a credit agreement, you are inviting many challenges because the credit provider will charge many other things, including the initiation fee, interest rates, credit life insurance, collection costs, and service fee, and so on and so forth. So when we buy things, we have to ask ourselves, is it a need or is it a want? And let's try our best to use credit to acquire assets. There is a difference between good and bad debt. Good debt is when you are buying necessities, things that you cannot live without. Those are called needs. Your house is a need. Education for yourself and for your children is a need. So if you don't have cash, you may be compelled to apply for a loan for your education or the education of your children. And that is classified as good debt. Bad debt is when you are competing with people who are not competing with you. These are unnecessary debts. We are buying gadgets. We are buying things that we do not need. It's just the want that you are saving. Many of us are tempted on, uh, on Black Friday. Soon it's coming. We will be storming the malls. We'll be buying clothes will be buying things that we really did not budget for. And all of these things makes us to become slaves. Remember the, 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 the scripture that I quoted, it says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Some of us, we buy clothes to attend weddings or even funerals. And that's not your funeral but you choose to go to a boutique to buy a new outfit to attend a funeral of somebody that you have never met. You are going to a wedding. It's not your wedding. But at that wedding, you are brighter than the bride. 
and you bought clothes on credit. That does not help. Always try to prioritize good versus bad debt. Ask yourself, is it a need or is it a want? Then go for needs than wants. If you didn't budget for it, don't buy it. Good debt include your education, your business, ownership, investment, real estate. Bad debt, payday loan, cash advances, the credit card, our vehicles. Many of us, we drive above Vrupa. Your Vrupa is not an asset. It's not an asset. So if you use credit to compete with people who are not competing with you, with you, you will find yourself in debt. These are facts about debt. When you approach a credit provider, either a bank or an, any credit provider, Mashonisa, they have rights to charge you. And these are the charges that they will charge you. Initiation fee is the first charge. Then they charge you interest rates that I have said, you have a right to negotiate for it, whether you are buying a house, a car, or any other type of credit, monthly savings fee. As long as your credit is active, you will be charged a monthly savings fee. As long as you have a credit card, the bank will charge you a monthly savings fee. Then they have a right to charge your credit life insurance, which I indicated that it's a debt relief measure. A default charges. If you default with your child payments, they will charge you default charges. Then they charge you collection costs. And that's how, why we say debt is, credit is very expensive. If possible, let's reduce our consumption of credit. Many of us, we are sharing on the platforms through digital technology. The truth is digital technology is here to stay. It has made life easy, especially when we're facing the pandemic. You were able to, at the press of a button, you were able to service your needs. You were able to make purchases. You were able to pay your account. But unfortunately, it has got a serious impact. It has a serious impact in the sense that you are even sharing your very important information with strangers, with fraudsters. By mere, the mere fact that you open up yourself to these platforms, you may find yourself in trouble. Social media is one of the platforms that we open ourselves into. We're sharing information. When I take my wife and kids to holidays, I'm tempted to host and say love lives here, we are enjoying ourselves in the beach, and so on and so forth. The truth is I'm opening up a gap to those who are behind. They can just go to your house and do whatever they want. What happens to the data you share? Your ID, you, you, you are busy with your phone, and there's a pop out there. And then they say you qualify for a loan, and you are required to share your ID number you are putting yourself in trouble because some of the platforms that we're sharing our personal information may be dangerous. The question is, as you are sharing information with strangers, do you trust them? Are you sure your information is protected? Personally, I was a victim of fraudsters who applied for a credit card at Woolworths. They took around 60,000 rand that was used and I had to fight tooth and nails to ensure that they clear my name. Now imagine if you don't know your rights, you are gone. Your name is negatively listed. You will no longer buy on credit until your name is clear. So you'll either have to wait for many years to participate again within the credit industry. Our credit industry says, as at present, in the SADC region, South Africans are the biggest credit consumers. We have over around 50 million South Africans at present, according to States SA. Now, we have 
over 26 million active credit consumers. These are men and women who eat credit with fork and knife. Those that are in good standing, you'll see it's 16 million. Those that are in the red or with impaired credit records, it's over 30, just almost 38%. And I am saying that we are the consumers of credit because our debts as at present stand at 2.16 trillion. That's a lot of money that we are owing. And it's heartbreaking to find that even us who are called by the name of Christ are over indebted. We can't even be able to participate in the advancement of the kingdom of God, specifically because we are over indebted. What is to be over indebted? It starts with a simple thing, a phone call. That phone call congratulates you. You qualify for now a black credit card, silver, gold credit card. And what do you do? Many of us are tempted to say, yes, yes, yes. Somebody calls you, you qualify for a brand new Samsung or Apple phone, what do you say? Yes, 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 yes. And they've called you, they are using a phone, you use a phone to receive that call. You have a cell phone, but this person is still advertising another cell phone. Many people think that English has got to do with yes only. Let me tell you, even though it's still an answer, you are still talking English. You don't have to say yes to all adverts. Some of them will tell you, will deliver it at, the, at your doorstep. You are tempted to just accept. And tomorrow you wake up, you can no longer even participate in giving. You can no longer participate in making your family happy because you are over indebted. And what is to be over indebted? You are over indebted if the money available in your pocket is no longer enough to pay all other debts and you continue to live a healthy life, buying grocery for your family, taking them for a holiday, living comfortably, then that's over indebtedness. So in over indebtedness leads to chaos. You will underperform in all aspects of your life because you are over indebted. What causes over, over, what causes over indebtedness? Lack of knowledge. I'm glad tonight I'm addressing God-fearing men and women. The word of God teaches, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Some of us, we are over indebted because we are over indulging. You are living in the first class lounge. You are ignoring financial products that are out there. You, you do not plan properly. You are not budgeting. There is social pressure. My brothers and sisters are driving these nice cars. Therefore, I want one. I want that car and I can't afford it. But just because my peers are driving it, you want to buy that car. I thank God for Brasoli. I've known him for many, many years. He has been driving his Mazda and he's proud of that Mazda because of what? That's called self-acceptance. He is not pressurized by our German wheels, by our Vrupas. He consistently says, this is what I can afford, and therefore I will stick with this. The other cause of over-indebtedness is change in circumstances. Unfortunately, that man or that woman who wanted to do life with you decides to abandon you or divorce you, you can be over indebted. If you get retrenched, you can be over indebted. Death can also lead you to over indebtedness. But the very, very disappointing one is reckless lending, reckless borrowing. The National Credit Act prohibits reckless lending. Economic upswing can also throw you off balance. You can be over indebted because of interest rates that are rocketing sky high, fuel prices that are rocketing sky high. But the other worrying factor is greed. 
Many of us, we sign credit agreements because of greed. Many of us, because of blind faith, you just sign and you expect that God will one day settle your account. Specifically, it's because of the, these imposter pastors that are preaching on our screens. Many of them promise people that they can pray for you and your debts will be wiped away. Now, as a disciple, avoid that. God never signed your credit agreement. Don't expect God to pay for your account. Greed and blind faith leads to over-indebtedness. And these are the signs of over-indebtedness. When you start borrowing money to pay other loans. When you start borrowing from your brothers and sisters, you are owing all of them. It's a sign you are over-indebted. When you skip payments on some account in order to pay others, you are over-indebted. When you receive letters of demand and summons from creditors, it's a sign you are over-indebted. When you think of placing yourself under debt administration or debt counseling, it's a sign of over-indebtedness. Unfortunately, because of time, I won't be able to unpack all these concepts unless in the near future I will be able to if I'm given another chance. Judgment get passed against you. Even in your absence, credit providers have a right to pass judgment against you because they will send you um, section 129 notice, conscientizing you that you are behind with, with your installments. If you don't respond, then they can even do what is called emolument attachment order by approaching your employer that your employer must be the one who slice your salary, pay your account, then you get the remainder. So that's a sign that you are over indebted. Some of us, we cannot keep up. We thank God for the COVID-19 pandemic because it gave us a chance to work from home. Some of us were forever absent from work, especially around month end, because you have a big headache. How am I going to pay my account? The minute your salary is paid into your account, debit orders go. And then you find that there's nothing. You haven't bought even grocery for your family. It's a sign you are over indebted. There are many of us who are emotional. You feel emotional and stressed about money matters. You regularly lose money to rip offs. I mean, you receive an, a text message which says, congratulations, you won half a million. You know you never entered any competition. Why are you wasting your time to contact those people to claim the money? It's a sign you are over indebted. I mean, for you to win Lotto, which is uh, regulated and, it's, it, and it, it's legal, you must go to the kiosk and buy a Lotto ticket. Then you stand a chance of winning a Lotto. There's no way that you can win any account, and I mean, any competition that you have never entered. But I know there are brothers and sisters who will try to claim a, a, a competition they never entered. In the early hours of the morning, somebody will send you a text message to congratulate you that you have won FIFA World Cup 2010. You even forget it's 2022. You want to claim a FIFA World Cup after 12 years, you did not enter any competition. That's a sign you are over indebted. These are signs of debt addiction. Forever you have an excuse. Forever you have an excuse uh, to, to buy something new. You'll come home and says, honey, this dress was calling my name. Honey, these shoes were calling my name. I could not resist. I had to buy them on credit. That's a sign that you are addicted to debt. You have more than two accounts that you are paying, or you have more than two credit cards. You have a mounting unpaid bills. You are failing to make minimum payments, yet you are able to apply for a new credit card, a new clothing card. That's a sign you are addicted to debt and you need help. You are always opening new accounts. You don't keep track on how much you are owing. You are not saving for rainy days. You're living paycheck to paycheck. You are just chasing the wind. 
you use one card to pay off other debts. That's what we mean when you say you using you take money from Standard Bank, you pay Capitec, you take money from African Bank, you pay Standard Bank. That's a sign that you are addicted to debt. Unfortunately, there are people who are looking for jobs. They don't get employed specifically because their qualifications, their skills says you must be in the financial sector. You will be excluded if you are negatively listed. If you apply for promotion, that requires honesty in terms of managing finances. You, they won't employ you, specifically because you are negatively listed. And I tasted that in the past. You are adversely listed, you are stressed, you are underperforming, not only at your workplace, even at your own house, you are underperforming. At your own bedroom, you underperform because you are over indebted. You suffer repossession, you are unhappy, you are absent. There are those who are trying to drown their debts in the bottle of a wine or bottle of beer. You abuse substances because of debt. You wake up, they are still staring at you. It's not, a, it's not a solution to abuse drugs or to abuse alcohol because creditors are looking for you. Face your demons head on. Take note, you can live within your means. You can spend less. You cannot borrow your way out. What we need to do is we have to revise, change our lifestyle, review your budget. If you are eating often at outside, you better reduce the frequency thereof. Your solution to over indebtedness is budgeting. And I always tell people that a budget must have both expenses as well as savings. You need to save. When you save, you are paying yourself. When you pay your account, you are paying your creditors. So work out a budget, stick to it. If you are over indebted and they are calling you, don't ignore the demands. There are people who choose to change their contact details specifically because they are running away from creditors. That's not the solution. It's heartbreaking to see our sister is standing in front of that which used to be a house that she belonged, that she owned. It's repossessed. It's on auction. It's heartbreaking to see that. It's also heartbreaking to see that your car get repossessed because you are not dealing with things correctly. So we need discipline, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that German car. The German wheels is gone. Why? Because our brother was not responsible. He did not work out the budget. He did not cut um, the pattern according to the cloth that he has. Bad credit records will ruin your life. You have to remember that the borrower is a slave to the lender. A borrower is a slave to the lender. In closing, let me repeat again. In Psalm 37, verse 21, it says, the wicked borrow and they do not repay, but the righteous is generous and give. So I, I won't touch some of the slides that are moving for fast over specifically because of time. I wanna close by saying, contact any credit bureau and ask for your credit report. Your credit report will tell you who are you owing, who have handed you over. And then you will also check your personal details because fraudsters, when they want to commit fraud, they first interfere with your personal details at the credit bureau. The other advantage of checking or requesting a credit report, which is for free, is to check any negative data. But you will also see why are they calling you nonstop to give you credit. Probably it's because your credit scores are good. And that's a good thing. 
but you'll also ensure that you are not a victim of ID theft if you keep on asking for a credit report. It will help you a lot. So these are the major credit bureaus that we have in our country, TransUnion, Experian, XDS, Consumer Profile, Vericred. These are not the only credit bureaus. Remember the NCR's role is to register credit providers, credit bureaus, and debt customers. So these are some of the credit bureaus that you can contact and ask for your credit report and challenge any wrong information if you find that information. Where am I today? Where do I want to be tomorrow? And the question is, how do you get there? It starts by facing your creditors with your own face. You just face them, you make arrangement with them, you negotiate, and then you'll be out of trouble. Thank you, thank you very much. So if you wanna ask a question, my colleague Jimmy is available to also respond or assist in responding to questions. I know it's not a, a simple topic. It's a very challenging one. And many of us have been taught not to hang our dirty linens in public. So you may ask a question and say, I've got a cousin who has this problem. How can we help him or her? Then we'll pretend it's not you will answer that question as well. Thank you. Uh, for starters, uh, good evening, uh, brothers and sisters in the platform. Um, the question is, what is your take on credit uh, consolidation? Okay. Uh, that consolidation is one of the uh, measures that one can consider if they are struggling with their finances. However, it should be noted that uh, with debt consolidation, you don't necessarily have to be struggling with uh, your finances to consider this option, unlike debt counseling, because debt counseling is specifically meant for consumers who are already struggling with their debts, who do not know who to pay uh, at the end of the month. However, with debt consolidation, you may opt for that for a number of reasons. One, uh, if you are tired of moving from one to five stores uh, uh, over month end. If you consolidate, you only have one person to pay or one company to pay. Uh, additionally, most companies that offer debt consolidation will give you an extended repayment term, which has the effect of lowering your installments. You might find that collectively for your five or six accounts you were paying, uh, say for example, 7,000. However, when you consolidate them, uh, pay them off and you are left with one account, because of the extended repayment term, uh, you might find that you're actually paying in the region of uh, 4.5, 5,000, 5.5. However, that, uh, that has lowered your installment. However, it comes at a cost. The longer you take to repay any credit extended to you, the more you pay back to the credit provider. So it is entirely in the hands of the user of credit uh, that they should understand what they are getting themselves into as to whether they want to consolidate uh, their debts or not. What we normally advise is um, if one is considering consolidating, um, just make sure you don't include those debts that are nearly finished. If you have an account that is left with four, four five, six installments, uh, it is wise not to include it when you consolidate your debts. Because if you include it, you are going to pay a five months debt in 60 months, and then you will end up paying a whole lot of money. That would be my take and my response to the question. Thanks, Jimmy. I, I, I will just uh, uh, spice it and say, debt consolidation, look, the fact that you are paying more than five credit providers, you are like a slave to them. Now, when you consolidate, a new slave owner buys you from the five, and now you are now a slave to one. So once, when you move from many to one, it does not make you not to be a slave. You are still a slave. 
So I always advise people to say, before you consolidate, calculate, recalculate, and calculate and recalculate. Because remember, as Jimmy said, when you sign a new contract, a new credit agreement, you will be charged again an initiation fee. You'll be charged interest, new interest rates. You'll be paying monthly savings fee for the next coming four or five years. You'll be charged credit life insurance. So all those charges will tell you that at the end of the day, you are back to square one. So where possible, fasten your safety belt, deny yourself the joys of this world, face your creditors, face your creditors and pay. And if you pay, you will be out. So where possible, it just, that consolidation for me brings convenience more than anything. Because you are no longer paying many, you are paying one, but you are still a slave. You are a slave to many, now you are a slave to one. Uh, what is the best way to pursue someone who owes you money? Okay. The best way, if you are a credit provider and you are a licensed credit provider, you have a legal route. The legal route is to claim, use the legal um, departments or use lawyers to pursue this person. If it's, it depends on the amount that you are owing. You, the person is owing. There is also what we call small claims court. You can approach the small claim court and so that the person can commit to pay you back, unfortunately. But if it's a relative, maybe it's your wife who is owing or your, your husband who is owing you, unfortunately, um, you cannot negatively list this person. But for negative listing, a person must be a credit provider. So if you use lawyers, they can help you to reclaim your money. The next question. Thank you. Uh, the next question is for us, um, It says, what is your advice to someone who is finding it hard to honor their contracts due to uh, interest, hike, uh, interest rate, rate hikes? Um, what, are the step, what are the steps they need to take uh, to make sure that they are not negative, negatively okay. list. listed. Perfect, I understand that question. Okay, perfect, that's a good question. One, I mentioned that there are debt relief measures that are in line with the National Credit Act. Some of the measures are harsh. The first one is known as section 127 of the National Credit Act says, you can voluntarily surrender the goods back to the credit provider. And the credit provider will evaluate the goods and then tell you that they will be on sale, auction, public auction, and they can be sold for so much. You will decide whether to go ahead and sell at that price, depending on whether you are happy with the amount that they're gonna give you at the end of the day. It's your right to go to the credit provider and says, I'm bringing back my car, I can't afford it. They will sell it at a public auction. And then the law says, once this item is sold, the money must be used to settle the account. But unfortunately, if, 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 if your car is sold at a lower price, you will unfortunately be liable for outstanding balances. The second debt relief measure is called debt review or debt counseling. With debt review, you approach a registered debt counselor who will negotiate with all your creditors that they give you an opportunity to pay what you can afford to pay. Let's say you are paying an installment of a vehicle, you are supposed to pay 5,000 rand, but you can only afford to pay 2,500 or 3,000 rand. So depending on your affordability, the credit provider is compelled to accept what you can afford to pay. It is under debt review or debt counseling. It protects your property against repossession. If you continue not paying what is required, the credit provider will issue section one to nine notice. Then they will approach the court 
then they can repossess that property. And unfortunately, it's gonna negatively affect you. You will be adversely listed at the credit bureau. So it's very important that you know your rights. Uh, Alf, uh, if I may add to your response to um, the question of how to survive the difficult financial times, especially the interest rate heights. Mm -hmm. um, think something that you can do right away, one is to review your budget. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, the new interest rate hikes demands that you will have to, you, you need to have additional uh, funds to pay for the new installments. And these guys don't waste time. Um, they mm -hmm. announced interest rate hikes on Thursday evening. By Friday morning, I had received my, a, a, a message from my bank telling me my new installment on the bond. Meaning all of us who have credit somewhere, we are going to pay more for our cars, our houses, our furniture, our clothes this month. So for you to be able to stay afloat, you need to review your budget. Go back mm -hmm. to your budget and check what is it that you can cut back on. For example, mm -hmm. on entertainment, you can cut out on how many times you go out to the movies. On eating out, you can cut back, you can cut back on what you eat or you can completely cut back on eating out so that you save and free some money, which you will then redirect uh, to these things that are more critical than simply going out to hang out and to get yourself entertained. And then we can also consider downgrading uh, brothers and sisters uh, in terms of some of the things that we do. If you are getting your groceries at Woolies, uh, it may be time to get, to get your groceries at Spa or ShopRite or any other retailer where things are more affordable. So basically you need to make sure that the money that you have at your disposal is still able to meet the requirements that are imposed upon us by the interest rate hikes. And unfortunately, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, I think I had one economist saying, even the next meeting of the MPC is likely to hike the rates. So we must brace ourselves for a bumpy ride. Thank you.